The MSI Titan GT77 is a high-end gaming laptop designed for enthusiasts, gamers and professionals who demand desktop class performance in a laptop shell. Before, small form factor builders made noise about how they could build a cheaper and more powerful system in a shoebox. I'm talking about a full suite of components including the PC itself with a display, a keyboard, all packed in an easy to carry setup. This particular laptop comes equipped with a powerful combination of components including the Intel Core i9-13950HX processor, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 laptop graphics card at 175W maximum graphics power and a 64GB of DDR5 memory. That is just part of the internal components because MSI also throws a 4K HDR display and a cherry low-profile mechanical keyboard into the setup. Let's find out more about the MSI Titan GT77 HX right after this. Starting off with the GT77's chassis design that was first introduced last year with the 12th gen Intel processors, there are almost no visual changes to the new model except for the internal component update. As you can see, this thing is absolutely massive. There's a huge extension at the back after the display hinge that is dedicated to the cooling system. This type of design allows a slimmer laptop at the expense of a larger footprint. The RGB illumination is available on the MSI logo on the lid and the entire row of exhaust vent at the back. This is pretty much all the RGB you get on the laptop chassis if you don't count on the keyboard. I guess RGB lovers will have to opt for the MSI Raider GE77 if they want Unicorn to put RGB on the laptop. Speaking of the keyboard, this SteelSeries keyboard utilizes Cherry MX Ultra Low Profile Mechanical Switches. Yes, this is a mechanical keyboard. In case you're wondering, it is something equivalent to MX Brown, a tactile switch and this is what it sounds like. Overall, a bit noisier than what we have on the full-size MX switches, probably due to the thin keycaps and lack of internal loops. Oh, and one more thing is, because of the size restriction of the Cherry mechanical key switch, only the primary typing zone is using the switch itself. The rest, such as the function row, the numpad zone, are using conventional membrane switches. Nonetheless, I think they have done an excellent job at this keyboard, combining both different switches on the same keyboard. Normal users might not be able to tell the small keys are non-mechanical because the smaller size and how they resemble closely to the Cherry MX switches. The keyboard has per-key RGB and it is spectacular and bright. You can configure more RGB lighting effects in the SteelSeries GG software as well as macro shortcuts. The trackpad is decently sized and useful for web browsing and normal pointing tasks. Gamers would not be bothered by it since they are going to use a mouse anyway. At 3.3kg, some might argue this is useless as a laptop. Well, that is because you're comparing it to an ultra portable laptop. The point is this is meant to be a portable desktop. It is for those gamers and professionals that demand a powerful PC that they can bring with them easily. Just pack the laptop and the charging brick, then they are set. The arrow ports are located on the left and right side. On the left, we have the MSI's charging connector, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port. Try not to mistake it with the charging port because they look almost identical. SD card reader, 3.5mm combo audio jack. The SD card reader is just a standard reader that averages about 80 megabytes per second read. Content creators and filmmakers might want to use your own high-speed SDXC card reader instead. On the right, we have one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port and two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Surprisingly, we have a mini display port. 
Nonetheless, we have HDMI 2.1 ports and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. In terms of wireless connectivity, the GT77 is equipped with a Killer AX1690i module that supports Wi-Fi 6E as well as Bluetooth 5.3. And now the display. This is a 4K 144Hz mini LED display. The colors are vibrant and details are sharp. The black has stark contrast thanks to the local dimming zones. While MSI advertises the panel has over 1000 dimming zones, there is still potential for image blooming if there is a bright object on a dark background. However, I don't think you will need to worry about this since you will rarely encounter such a specific situation. Just that it is quite weird that in 2023, whereby many other brands have moved on to a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, while the flagship GT77 is still stuck with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. In our color meter test, we have measured about 950 nits of peak brightness on this particular monitor and it can even achieve 99% of the sRGB and DCI-P3 color gamut coverage. That is very impressive for a monitor of this caliber. On top of that, you are also getting 0.55 range of Delta E, so that is really good consider that this is supposed to be a gaming monitor. And that brings us to the HDR support of the display. I have to say Windows HDR is extremely problematic. Other than having the need to manually enable it in the display settings, you will also encounter color profile issues and no HDR option when using the laptop on battery. For once, I had extremely low FPS in games after turning on HDR averages at about just 45 fps in Red Dead Redemption 2 is not normal for an RTX 4090. I only managed to solve it after disabling and re-enabling the Windows HDR settings. Overall, the display is high quality and probably only can be utilized fully by a high-end GPU such as the RTX 4090. And that brings us to the performance. Our review unit comes with Intel Core i9-13950HX. This particular processor is supposed not to be available for retail since normal version should have an Intel Core i9-13980HX, which is about 100MHz faster on the P cores. Other than that, the 13950HX is more suitable for corporate workstations as it supports Intel vPro Enterprise technology. The CPU is paired with a DDR5 for the 800 mega transfer RAM at a total of 64 gigabytes. We are comparing the MSI Titan GT77 HX to our recently reviewed ASUS ROG Strix SCAR18. They have almost identical internal components such as RTX 4090, except the CPU, whereby the SCAR18 has a 13980HX, while this one has 13950HX. Cinebench shows an almost identical single core performance score and a reasonable multi-score performance difference between the 13950HX and 13980HX. Other than that, PCMark 10 has a negligible performance difference. That goes the same for the 3DMark Speedway, TimeSpy and Port Royal since both laptops have the same RTX 4090 GPU at a maximum 175 watt DGP. I've conducted the gaming test twice on both 4K and 1440p resolution to get a better understanding and better comparison with the Strix SCAR18. Cyberpunk 2077's latest RT Overdrive update is actually bringing the RTX 4090 down to its knees. You will have to enable DLSS with frame generation technology to fully enjoy the new function. In our test, averaging at about 51 FPS in the game is still playable at 4K resolution with RT Overdrive and DLSS FG enabled. I have to say the frame generation technology is the MVP here for enabling smooth gameplay experience on 4K resolution. Lowering the resolution down to 1440p allows the game to run at over 120 FPS if you play on RT and DLSS FG. The same applies to Control, whereby 4K 60 FPS is possible no matter if you choose to enable RT DLSS or not. That's very impressive. 
Older games such as RDR2 and Dirt 5 can easily achieve nearly 100 FPS when you max out all the settings on 4K resolution. All in all, while I still believe 1440p is the best balance when it comes to display sharpness and performance requirements, not to mention the cost, the RTX 4090 laptop has done an excellent job at providing 4K gaming that is finally viable on laptops. And so, to cool down all those high performance components is a robust cooling system that combines 9 heat pipes and 4 fans. Yes, you heard that right, 4 fans in a laptop. And yes, they can be really, really loud during load and heavy gaming. The end result, the Intel Core i9 is kept under 90 to 95 degrees Celsius most of the time and the RTX 4090 operated at about 75 degrees Celsius. That is quite an achievement considering the CPU and GPU are taking about 75 watt and 175 watt respectively during Cyberpunk 2077 session. Outside of heavy workloads and games, the fan noise is almost inaudible when you use it for normal web browsing and document processing. For example, when the laptop is idling, I can't even hear the fan. The bottom chassis is attached via standard Phillips screw and can be removed with a bit of prying. Depending on the country, some might have those warranty void stickers to prevent users from accessing the internals. There are 4 sodium slots and 3 M.2 slots for future upgrades. The MSI GT77 has a massive 99.9 watt hour battery which provides decent battery life considering the powerful hardware. With normal usage, you can expect to get about 5 hours of battery life. However, you will have to change to silent mode, limit the display to 60Hz and lower the display brightness. Batteries on this type of laptop is more like a UPS instead of being a battery for long hours of field work. Overall, the MSI Titan GT77 HX is an excellent gaming laptop that provides top-of-the-line performance and a rare 144Hz 4K Mini LED HDR display. Honestly, I don't have much to complain about other than about the buggy Windows 11 operating system, but yeah, that's for another day. The hardware provider in this package checks all the marks if my work requires me to travel overboard for quite some time. All those flagship components result in a jaw-dropping 27,000 ringgit price tag. That is why it is a niche laptop only for those who can afford it or actually need it. Linus Tech Tips even made a video discussing why this kind of laptop exists despite you can easily build a more powerful desktop PC with the same budget. The comment section is especially good if you are still insisting that desktop PCs are a better option. So that's all I want to share with you about the MSI Titan GT77 today. And if you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next video.